All right, we're back. We are throwing more upgrades on the Kraken Vesla again today. Uh, this day, we are going to put on some suspension upgrades, and we are going to start by replacing a broken front suspension arm. So grab a pick tool, take that E-clip right off, just like that. You can slide the hinge pin out, and that will get the C-hub off. Next, you're going to remove the lower shock mount and separate the shock from the suspension arm. Uh, then you're going to remove the E-clip for the inner hinge pin and slide the arm out. Uh, I got a fresh set of arms because, like I said, that one was cracked. Uh, one of the first things is that you'll notice is that there's kind of a bit of slop, and so I'm going to remedy that with the Team Fast Eddy hinge pin shim kits. It's the same size as the HPI Baja. I found that two one millimeter hinge pin shims worked perfect for both the front and the rear and still gave me plenty of free movement on the suspension arm. You want to make sure that they don't bind at all, but in my case I found that two one millimeter shims worked perfectly for the front and the back. So you can see that installed nice and easy. Next we're going to work on the rear hub carriers. You're going to first remove the set screw that holds the drive pin and the hex hub in place. Uh, that can sometimes get a little tricky to remove uh, because there could be some grit and dirt in there. So clean that out. Uh, you'll slide out the drive pin, the hex hub comes off the stub axle, and then you're going to remove the rear camber link. From there we're going to pop the e-clip off again. I like to work over a towel so in case that clip goes flying it doesn't get lost. So the hinge pin comes out. Now you're holding the rear hub carrier and drive shaft. You're simply going to remove the drive shaft and then you're going to pop the bearings out and then we're going to install those bearings in the new Kraken billet rear hub carrier. They are directional so pay attention to that. Uh, sometimes the bearings they can press fit in uh, sometimes they'll need a little bit of persuasion, so use something like what I used here, just a little gentle tap, and the bearing went in smoothly. So I put the CV axle and the rear inner bearing into place. Once those are in, check make sure that the bearings are spinning freely. Then you'll replace the hex drive hub and the drive pin. And then you're going to replace that set screw. Make sure you use a you clean it off. Use a little bit of a removable thread lock, like blue thread locker. Get that tightened up. Reinstall the rear hub carrier hinge pin. Pop the E-clip back on. Replace the rear camber link. And you are done with that. Admire your work. See how it looks. Okay, next up, we're going to work on the optional rear sway bar. Comes with a couple of bags of hardware and some plastic linkages. So you can see the hardware there. And then these little sway bar end balls and sway bar link itself. So first you're going to take that plastic sway bar mount and that is held in place with two button head screws. Since I'm using the billet rear transmission, I did use a little bit of blue thread lock. Loosely install those screws first. Make sure that the sway bar is able to move freely. Then you've got a big grub screw, so it's the biggest one in the package. That goes in the middle. As you tighten it, you want to move the sway bar to make sure it can still move freely. Once you feel it binding, just back off that set screw a tiny amount. Now the sway bar end links need to be assembled. So they'll simply twist together. You'll install the one of the hollow uh, rod end balls on the bottom and then a sway bar link on the top. They are directional, so it's like the way that you snap the ball joint in will be important on how you do that. And then you can add these little grub screws. Those Don't tighten those all the way yet. We get to that later. Install that on the lower suspension arm. 
and then what you'll do is you'll align that linkage the sway bar end link so that it matches the angle of the sway bar you'll push that sway bar into that ball connector and then tighten that set screw use blue thread lock now that's all done we can move on to the next step of our suspension upgrades we are going to be installing the Galante Performance Limiting Straps. These come with a new upper shock, uh, shock stay nut. So you remove the lock nut, add a little bit of blue thread lock, and then from there you'll tighten on the Galante upper shock mount. From here you got to thread your limiting strap through the lower suspension arm. This is where I did it on the rear. So you can see just I wanted to keep it as close to the sh lower shock mount as possible. And then at the top you'll set your ride height and then you just mark make a little mark with a marker. So that kind of keeps you in mind where you want to have the top of your of your shock limiting strap be when it's on that upper shock mount. Getting these buckles to thread was tricky. Took me a minute to figure it out, so hopefully this video is illustrative in getting that done and then you'll just compress the shock install it around that hoop so here's my front end you can see how I routed the shock limiting strap between the shock and the upper camber link and then this is the rear you'll see that I've got a little bit of clearance it seems really tight but once you get the model at ride height it does give you clearance between the drive shaft. I'm going to watch this, but again, I wanted to keep the limiting strap as close to the lower shock mount as possible. And this is just a teaser of a little bit of what we're going to do in this series, the finished product. So tune in for our next video where we will install the chassis braces. Thanks so much for watching.